What's up, creative family? It's Timothy Stone Dancer Coleman, Director of Education and your host for Emerging Media Makers. I'm here at Bronx Nets Media and Technology Studios in the South Bronx, ready to introduce you to two more amazing certified producers. I think we should get back inside and start the show. It's been a long time since the Bronx was burning. Like a phoenix rising from the ashes, the rich stories from our community continue to captivate and entertain audiences from the Bronx and beyond. Welcome to Emerging Media Makers. This show was created to shine a light on the talent and vision of BronxNet's access producers. Emerging Media Makers, your passion lives here. What's up, creative family? My name is Timothy Stone Dancer Coleman. I am the Director of Education for BronxNet and your host for Emerging Media Makers. Our goal is to shine a light on the amazing talents of our certified producers, as well as to introduce you to how easy it is to get your creative ideas in front of the world. By participating in one of our certification classes, you too could become a producer of your own show at one of our three BronxNet TV locations. We have studios at Mercy University in Westchester Square, in Carmen Hall on the campus of Lehman College, and here at BronxNet's Media and Technology Studios in the South Bronx. We have certified classes in field production and in-studio production that will teach you the basics of TV production, plus a host of other classes that support you on your journey of content creation. Everyone starts with a free class called Masterclass, How to Unleash Your Ideas. In this class, you'll get an overview of how previously certified community members have gone on to produce their own original programming. We also leave time in that class for you to hear your questions, uh, to converse with you about your ideas, and make sure that we help you get on the path that's best suited for your own needs. If you're a person who's hesitant to take that first step into TV production because perhaps you don't want to be in front of the camera as a host, then rest assured there are several positions available that need your support like audio engineering, set design, light design. Maybe you want to operate a camera or do floor management. There's so much to choose from. Check out bronxnet.org forward slash education for more information and find out how easy it is to start your producing journey and get your original idea out there for the Bronx and beyond. When we come back, we're going to meet two amazing certified producers here at BronxNet and we're going to hear their very unique stories. We'll be back in a moment. Welcome back, creative family. On today's show, we will be highlighting two amazing people. Up first is Ray Allen. Ray is an actor, singer, director, playwright, and producer who began his directing and producing career for the stage at age 21 with James Baldwin's Blues for Mr. Charlie at the Double Image Theater at Lincoln Center. He is the founder and executive artistic director of Theater International Incorporated. He is also the president and CEO of Southern Diaspora Research and Development Center Incorporated, a nonprofit organization to the United Nations. Ray is the host and producer of World's Indigenous People here on BronxNet. So what do you say we go ahead and meet Mr. Ray? How you doing, sir? How you doing? All right, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for being with us today. Well, thanks for having me. Oh, listen, no yes. problem. So you know our show is set up to highlight our certified producers, but I always believe in this quote that, you know, came from, you know, it's attributed to a bunch of different people, but it says, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And so I want to start with, where are you from? Like, let's talk about your origins and like what led you up to finding out about BronxNet and beginning the production of your show. Where are you from and what's a little bit about your home background? You have three hours of it. <laughs> let's say the condensed version, <laughs> right? <laughs> well, I was born in Curaçao, um, which is Dutch Caribbean. Uh, I spent my first seven years there. My parents moved us to the island of Angola where they were born, wow. which is the British... Caribbean, uh, just to the north of uh, Saint Martin, and uh, and I 
I came here at the age of 14, okay. which I saw at James Monroe High School uh, in the ninth grade, and, and, and there where I got the bug for um, uh, uh, the, the arts. Mm-hmm. I, actually, I was singing from the time I knew myself, you know, um, in the Caribbean, but um, here I was exposed to the arts through and through, the old City High School Chorus Concert Choir of New York with John Motley, uh, doing major productions and all that throughout the city, the Teenage Performing Arts Workshops at, uh, uh, at um, uh, Manhattan, Manhattan School of Music and all that, you know, and, and that's where I just... So the bug go. bit you early. Yes, 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 <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's amazing. So then from... All of those experiences were you? Did you have other people in your family that were in entertainment, or no. like you were? You were kind of the first one that kind of got into those types of things. The first, the first. However, my 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 uh, mother and father, and all my family are good singers. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I have two sisters. I'm the only, the youngest of three children, and um, we would we'd get. At night, we would just sing. You know, each one of us have different parts, which we sing. I'm um, ten of my father's uh, bass baritone, oh, my, my mother and my older sister on soprano, mm-hmm. and my second sister and uh, on alto, and we would make a lot of noise. Amazing, amazing. Singing. Yeah, I come from a musical family yes. like that too, right, where everybody can pick a note and we all do like a chorus thing every now and again. Mm-hmm. Um, and of course so, in the church and all that. Well, know, exactly, exactly. So, so did that have a strong influence on oh, yes. you and the way you developed as a young man? Most definitely, most definitely um, doing all kinds of work. I actually started out uh, in classical. Mm-hmm. I, class, uh, I, I did classical and all that, and, and by the time I got to, to, to college, I was... Um, before, even before I got to college, I was uh, already singing with the Bronx Opera Company with Michael Spearman and 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 all that. You know, I was uh, doing opera and all that. That's kind of amazing. Stuff. Well, I mean, you know, starting I was classically trained as well, so mm-hmm. I think starting with that foundation helps you go in any direction, really. So, how did you get into directing? Sure, I uh, being a, uh, one of the first students of the Double Image Theater. What happened is um, we, we, we were taught everything, mm-hmm. you know, uh, we taught, taught you in terms of acting, the singing, the dance, and all that. And you had to help build sets, paint sets, uh, lighting, yes. and all that kind of stuff. So um, it got to the point where in which Double Image Theater, getting funding and all that, uh, they, they wanted to show their funders that their students are really learning. And it came to the point where in which they said, mm, we need to have, we need to show uh, what a, a student's able to direct. Mm-hmm. And I was chosen by the board to be the first student to wow, direct. Wow, wow. So you got put on the spot. You took all the knowledge of all the shows you had been in and all the things you had seen from the different places that you've lived. And you went for it. I went for it. And I was so daring. I decided to do James Baldwin's Blues for Mr. Charlie. I mean, which, yeah, it's which, like heavy. Which is based on the Emmett Till case, the Wolf Whistle, August 1955, Mississippi. So you didn't want to start with, like, how to bake a cake. You went all the way and, and, and did, like, a 19-course dinner. You went all the way to the end. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. And so then fast forward for me, you took all of those experiences, and, but at what point did you decide... I have a television idea, like this is another way that I want to release my talents to the world. Uh, that came out of the fact I, I, I was, I got involved at the beginning with um, the Indigenous Forum mm-hmm. at the United Nations. Mm-hmm. When they started it, uh, and this is going back in uh, 1990 actually, uh, with the Indigenous Forum at the United Nations, and um, the third, the third chairperson of the Indigenous Forum was Esmeralda Browns, and uh, I was her vice chair. Mm-hmm. And um, then, then came uh, 19, 19, 1995. We had a big summit. Mm-hmm. You know, the uh, indigenous for 94, actually 94 and 95, we had a big summit at the United Nations and the indigenous people. We had a year of the indigenous people. Then we went to the decade of wow. indigenous peoples. And I, I said, you know what? We need to 
learn more about this, get it on the air. Bronx Net started, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. and I, I took the course and I said- And you were one of our, in the beginning, producers. one of our first producers, right? Absolutely, yeah. And I took the course and I started Rose Indigenous Peoples. And I was, uh, and when uh, I was the first, I was the first show mm -hmm. to win a uh, beta award for educational programming. Oh, that's phenomenal. 1996. That's phenomenal. That's powerful. Well, listen, you're doing an amazing service mm -hmm. for cultures that deserve to be highlighted. Uh, you know, one of the things that we talk about a lot, uh, even with just the Bronx, is that there's always someone else trying to tell our story and, and trying to claim our story. And it's always better if we can tell it for ourselves. Thank you. Because, you know, those in power will never tell the story of the quote unquote minority it, with any level of favor. So it is up for us to keep track of our history, but to take the effort. I mean, it's so easy to go to Google and just look up a culture and, and start reading about it. But it's, there's, there's, there's so much misinformation. Well, there's there. misinformation, but at the same time, you've got to have some information. You have to have some information that, 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 that trigger you to go in deeper, much deeper. That's right. And that's, as, especially when we're uh, talking about the Garifuna particularly, um, uh, uh, in the history of, of the Garifuna and, and the war with the British uh, on the island of St. Vincent, um, so much has been written and in, in archives in England, you can go and all that, but it's a lot of misinformation. Of course. And I was able to go through a lot of it mm -hmm. and said, no, and start questioning, questioning, questioning mm -hmm. a lot of stuff. Right down to uh, when they say that Joseph Chatterjee was, was killed, he was the last uh, paramount chief mm -hmm. of the Gaddis the people. Uh, uh, he was killed on March the 14th, 1795. Where's the evidence? Where's the evidence? I think it's always good to question, right? Okay. It's always good to question all of that sort of stuff and do some research to figure out the truth. Yes. Okay. Uh, um, here, a man of, of such royalty mm -hmm. because of of, 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 of his West African culture, mm -hmm. okay? And, and, and also was in the French army. And here they paint him in a loincloth and, and, and the British soldiers are all dressed up and all that mm -hmm. and he's in a loincloth. Seriously? Mm -hmm. This is how it goes down, people. That's the real. <laughs> so tell us, the, tell us uh, the name of your show and when does it air on BronxNet? Rose Indigenous Peoples and uh, it, uh, it, it airs on Saturdays at 10 p.m. on channel 35 and channel 69. So you, you have 35 or 69. And if you don't have 35 or 69, you can go online at 10 o'clock Saturdays, 10 p.m and um, put in Bronx Net TV, watch live, and then click channel 35 or 69. And you can watch it right online, even right if you online. don't have that station. No matter, where you, no matter where you are in the world. That's right, that's uh, right. Because I, I've had the opportunity of, of interviewing people in different countries mm -hmm. during COVID. Mm, yes, yes, All yes. Right? And um, I, uh, when we were still on, uh, uh, on virtual, mm -hmm. virtual, um, in, in, in January of, of, uh, of 2023, last year actually, I, I, I did my show from, from Kenya. That's amazing. I was in Kenya and I interviewed, I interviewed someone in, in Brooklyn, New York, and another one in San Jose, California. He goes, to, he goes to Kenya to interview someone in Brooklyn, okay? Yeah. This guy travels, okay? Listen, <laughs> thank you so much, Ray, for joining us today. I really appreciate pleasure. it. The knowledge is so appreciated. Thank Keep doing you. what you do. We pray blessings upon you as you travel the world and, and, re and reveal uh, and share these amazingly rich stories of indigenous peoples. We'll be right back after this.
Welcome back, folks. Our next guest is Miss Cynthia Timms. Cynthia Timms was born in Harlem and raised in the Bronx. She attended City College of New York and graduated with a BA in liberal arts with concentrations in communications and literature. She went on to earn her MBA in media management from the Metropolitan College of New York. Cynthia is the host and producer of the show Mental Health and You, which she started in 2018. What do you say we get to know her a little bit better? Please welcome Miss Cynthia Timms to the show. How are you, Cynthia? Thank you. Thank you. How are you? I'm Thank doing you. great. I'm doing great. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. Not a problem at all. So before we start talking about your show, mm -hmm. I'd like for folks to get an opportunity to know a little bit more about you, right? Um, I believe in this quote, people don't care how much you know. About me. Until they know how much you care, right? <laughs> so let's find out a little bit more about you because that's another way that we connect the dots and get more folks to buy into who you actually are and then start watching all of your content, mm. right? So born in Harlem. Yes. And at what point did you make it over to the Bronx? Oh, I mean, it was, I was born in Harlem and I made it out into the Bronx as soon as I got out the hospital. Oh, okay. My, okay. <laughs> <laughs> let me make it clear. My parents, yes, let me make it clear. My parents were born, my parents lived in the Bronx. Okay. But much of our, I was born in Harlem, me and my sister. Uh -huh. My older brother, he was from the South. The, my, her two youngest, my two, my sibling and me. Yeah. I was raised in the Bronx all my life. Oh, got you, got you. Okay, okay. But the thing I say that like that because you know my life has always been split between the two. Right. You know, um, I well, grew I mean, up. It's a very thin line between the Bronx yes. and Harlem. I don't think people recognize until they look at a map like how close we actually are. Yeah, just a bridge or a subway stop away. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Are there other entertainers in your family? Like, did you see the, a representation of other? singer, actor, dancer, director, like any of that sort of thing in the family? Because I'm curious, how did the bug bite you, right? How, when did you, what inspired you to move into like TV production? I think I've always had a, an interest in TV, in movies, mm -hmm. in film. I, don't, I dare say I was like a nerd, <laughs> you know? I was pretty much a loner. So what I used to do, I used to entertain myself as a young kid watching movies. Right. And it just just went on, progressed from there. Uh, <laughs> I look back at it now. Yes, I had a lot of encouragement growing up in the church. Right. Uh, I saw a lot of, like, examples there. Mm -hmm. I dare say of entertainment and how to captivate an audience. Yes, yes. Um, Growing up in the black church, the black minister was so much. Yeah. And I, 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 I sung in the choir. Okay. I was a Sunday school teacher. Uh, some of y'all, I, I believe that now. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, one day, uh, yes, I was a Sunday school teacher, sung in the choir. My mother, my grandmothers, my aunties, my cousins, they were all deaconesses. Mm, okay. So I had that example of... And a real strong foundation. Yes. I mean, it wasn't entertainers. It was who they were. It's who we right, were. Right. But it's that example of strong women, women, yeah. black women. Yeah. You know, who I looked up to, mm -hmm. and I didn't really appreciate it. I think until I became an adult. Yeah. Looking back, yeah. I mean, all of them are long gone. My mothers, my my mother, my aunties, my grandmothers, they're all gone. But looking back, all of that played a role. You're talking about how I got interested in TV production, but it even goes back further than that. Mm -hmm. Just uh, telling a story. That's right. And that's what TV production is about, it's about telling stories. And in the church, there were stories being told. That's right. Of resiliency, or of, right. uh, Faith, of love. Patience. Community. Love, community, when, absolutely. When the world was giving them hell, they can come to church and I saw them, the deaconesses in their, their outfits, their white outfits, uh, the uniforms. Just so I saw the ushers yes. standing at attention. You know, I saw the choir in their gowns singing so beautifully. Yes. And as a little girl, you know, I guess that, 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 that played on me, that, mm -hmm. that made a mark on me, that, that, that left like an image in my mind. 
wow, okay, this this is something here. This is stories being told or that's right. You know, so that's yes. Right. Later on, it's like, how can I put this on film? How can I put this um, on paper? Right. Because everything starts with the story. That's right. So yeah. I love how you're saying that, right? Because uh, I, I teach a class called The Art of Storytelling. Ah. And I think that's the key component yeah. that a lot of people miss, right? Like now there are millions and millions and millions of podcasts, but also millions of podcasts that you never want to listen to yeah. because there's no story. Like what's, what, what am I listening for? What are you trying to relate to me? What story are you telling me? Yeah. And so I think it's really powerful that you say that. So fast forward that storytelling and that amazing experience yeah. and foundation into the actual show that you create for BronxNet, how did you think up that particular show and why is health so important? Like, why that story? Because I believe every black person in this country need therapy at some <laughs> point in their life. <laughs> I believe it ain't no way, no how, y'all. We have, we have gone what we have gone through in this country, in this world, in this environment, and come out even killed. Right. We're all right. going through some type of trauma. That is absolutely true. You know, so yes. at some point, and that goes for me. I mean, I'm a New York State certified peer specialist, which means I'm someone um, with a history. I've talked about it on my show, mm -hmm. with a history of anxiety and mental health issues, depression, who now is trained to uh, help others through my storytelling wow. and my lived experiences. Yes. Um, so... Be that as it may, I do this from a peer perspective, mm -hmm. uh, which is important because people need to see, yes, you're going through depression. You may be going through something, but there's still life out there. That's right. Yes, we may take, we may take therapy. You know, you may have to take medication. We're not adverse to taking medication if you need that. But there's there's other things that can make your life worthwhile. That's right. Other reasons for getting out of bed in the morning besides a job, which is important as well. Of course, of course. But I think because culturally, yes, right, inside of our culture, we don't talk about mental health. We don't talk about not only the need for it, we don't even admit that we need it. Which is one of the reasons for my show. I want to take the stigma Mm -hmm. out of mental wellness, out of yes. mental health, particularly in communities of color. Right. So how do I do that? How do I let people know just to talk about it, just to say that, you know, yes, I'm, I'm doing this. That doesn't mean you're crazy or you're weak. That's exactly You know, right. I don't want you to equate mental health with weakness. In fact, y'all, it's strength. Yes. Be able to admit, oh, yes, I'm going through something. I, I'm seeking help. I may take yes. medication, but guess what? I'm somebody, my life means something. Isolation is a very dangerous space yeah. to be in. And when you don't reach out for help and you don't admit to yourself and take that first step yeah. to, to find whatever that source of help is, mm -hmm. um, it can be very dangerous. And then it feels even more magnified in the silence, mm -hmm. right? And so with your show, has it been well received by the community? What kind of feedback have you gotten from it? Well, every time, it, it warms my heart, you know. Every time I meet somebody in the street or every time somebody sees me, you know, and it says, oh, you're on BronxNet. I think I shared the story on my show one day. I was in the supermarket on one of these old days. It was a Sunday, you know, those rainy Sundays oh, yeah. that nothing's going on, and I had to get out of my house. I had to get out of my head as well. So. I, I'm go to the store after I take my Dunkin' Donuts run. <laughs> I'm in the supermarket on the line, and this guy is looking at me. And I said, oh, boy. And then a couple minutes later, he says, aren't you on TV? And uh, that was the connection. I mentioned mental health in you, BronxNet. He's told me how much he loved the show and looked Aww. forward to it. So it was in that moment that got me out of my funk. Yeah. It made me feel that, okay, I'm making a difference. You yes. talk about the reaction, yeah. that was priceless for me right. because, you know, that, mean, that meant that I touched that guy that day. That's right. You know? And that's the power of television, yeah. right? It's, it's, it's the power of telling a good story, but yeah. the power of television is that you're reaching people in so many different places that you probably will never meet. Mm -hmm. And then here you are 
just out and about and stumble upon someone whose life has been impacted by the positivity of what you're putting into the universe. I think that's really powerful. So then what comes next? Like, what are you working towards or like what's at that next plateau for for you and for the show? Well, I want to talk about, I want to uh, progress. I want to talk about mental health from a um, a more of a global uh, standpoint. You know, there's some cultures in my work, I see it every day, often, who don't even acknowledge mental health. Mm-hmm. Don't even e- say it doesn't exist. Mm-hmm. You just do, you just get up and just do whatever you do. You can be having the, the worst of days. You can be on the verge of so much. It's just not acknowledged. So I want to talk about mental health more from a global perspective. How do different um, cultures deal with it? Mm-hmm. How do they address it if they address it? Right. Um, what are the uh, ways you address it? How do you, how do different cultures go about taking care of themselves? Whether that's through traditional uh, therapy, medication, whether that's yoga, mm-hmm. whether that's uh, meditation, right? Whether that's prayer, whether that's going out and taking a walk, talking about it, right? How your faith? What part did that play in your mental wellness? That's right. And how do you? Ign- even that culture of, um, I did a show, the culture of mental wellness and religion. Mm. You know, being that I grew up in the church. Yes. How is that looked upon, even to talk about it? So I want to, you're talking about how the, what, what's my goals for the show? I want to expand it. I want to talk about it more on a global perspective. I think it's really powerful yeah. what you're doing and the path that you're on. And I think it's going to be so impactful for people to see representations of themselves, oh, yes. of others who have gotten the help that they need. It has been such a pleasure <laughs> to meet you. Can you tell the folks, when can we catch your show on BronxNet? You can catch Mental Health in You on BronxNet uh, the first Thursday of every month. Um, channels, BronxNet channels 70 and dash 2136. Yep. First Thursday of every month. And uh, we look forward to seeing you. That's so beautiful. Thank you, Ms. Timms, for coming. Thank you for You're having me. You're doing a mighty, mighty work. And so I pray continued blessings on you and your path. And uh, to all of the people out there who know automatically watching this, that you might be a person, maybe what any something that Ms. Timms has said has registered to you, please take that moment. Please go and seek out something that you really love and enjoy. And, um, you know, it doesn't mean that you have to go visit your doctor. It doesn't mean that you have to condemn yourself. But be well to all of you and um, find that moment. We'll be right back after these messages. Hey, creative family, thank you so much for joining us again for Emerging Media Makers. This show is created to highlight community members who are just like you, who decided to use their own culture, their own story, their own experience to bring forward something that is digestible by the entire world. Thank you so much to Mr. Ray Allen and to Ms. Cynthia Timms for sharing their unique stories with us today. Remember, you always have everything you need right where you are to get your story out to the world. Please visit bronxnet.org forward slash education and check out our classes and let us help you bring your entertainment journey to the Bronx and beyond. We'll see you next time.